All right, everybody, we're gonna talk about break a leg at your next open house. No, that is not an embedded command. That is not an NLP technique. I really don't want anyone to injure yourself at your next open house because guess what? None of you are in, your, in my market. If there are people in my market here, I might, you know, might have a different way of approaching that. Uh, but the idea behind this is I want to help change people's perceptions of open houses and see them as productive, see them as something that are wonderful and fun and a great way to grow your business. And in my mind, an open house is like a production, like a mini Broadway show. So you'll, there'll be some theater illusions. Uh, if you get them, great. If not, well, just try to follow along. Uh, so let's just start from the basics. So do open houses work? Yes or no? Yes. Does my clicker work? Yes or no? <laughs> there we go. There we go. Is it, was that me or was that the screen? That was you. All right, you're fired. All right. <laughs> do they work? Yes or no? Yes. Well, well, let's let's ask about. Well, what is the reason to do an open house? Can someone tell me a reason that you do an open house? To get buyers. What's the reason to do an open house? To find sellers, to get leads, to advertise. I'm so glad. And guess what? No one said to sell the house. No one said we do open houses. We don't do open houses to sell the houses. That's a little dirty secret. If we sell one, and we often do, it's just bonus, but it's not really our motivation, right? How many open houses have you done in the last 12 months? Raise your hand if the last 12 months you've done more than 12 open houses. Okay, keep them up. If you've done more than 24, if you've done more than 50, if you've done more than 75, Oh, I think you're our winner back there. Okay, got it. So it seems like most of you are doing zero to most of you are doing like between zero and 30 open houses a year is kind of what I'm, what I'm gauging. And what percentage of your 20, 22 closings came from open houses and what is the return on investment? Does anyone know this number? You should. You should know what percentage of your business every lead source brings you and what the return on investment is. I was actually quite surprised when I found out open houses were our third biggest lead source in 2022 after Google and Sphere of Influence. And they accounted for 16% of just our buyer transactions. What that also tells me is our third biggest lead source is actually a fairly small percentage of our transactions because we have a lot of different lead sources. So that's just another thing that you can take from that. If done with intention, open houses are the most effective and least expensive lead source you can have but you need to know what you're doing and you need to do them effectively. You need to have a process. You like all things in real estate, you need to have a system. You can't just wing it. Your open house process should be scalable, repeatable, documented, and scripted. Every open house is like a production with a lot going on before and a lot going on after a very intense two hour performance. If you're a team leader or a broker, you should be training, directing, scripting your open house process for your teams and your brokerages. You should be teaching how to do open houses, just like you're training any other sales technique. Open houses, opening night of every listing. We do open houses, opening weekend of every single listing, unless the seller is just like no go. And there are abundant opportunities. You can get them from your own listings. If you're on a team, you should be begging your team leader to do open houses on every single listing, as many as you want. Other agents in your brokerage, and don't forget for sale by owners and expired. When I first got started in the business five years ago, I, most of my listings were for sale by owners and expired. Most of my for sale by owner listings, I listed those properties after I had already done an open house for the seller. I'm going to take all questions at the end because I am a chatterbox and I'll never get through. <laughs> so write your questions down. I'll take them at the end. I promise we're going to leave time. Open houses are like mini Broadway shows. I can, I can identify, and I will in this presentation, identify all of these things that exist in an open house. So first we have tech week, tech week, the week before your open house, because you know what? You got a lot to do because open houses are a lot more effective if people attend. 
So you're going to start with it. And I'm just, uh, this is our process. I just want to say that this is our process that we use, that we do every time for every open house. You may find something else that works for you. What's important is that you have a process, that you have a system that you follow almost without thinking about it. And you have people that are doing certain things along the way. So we start on Monday with our social media advertising. I do not like advertising an open house before the Monday of that open house because then people get confused. Well, is it this Saturday or is it next Saturday? And then you have people showing up at your seller's house uh, for a home that might, even not, might not even be on the market and your sellers really don't like that. Um, so we do our social media. Uh, it is a combination of advertising and lead generation. So you can do various things. You can do paid ads to your surrounding area, the community surrounding the house. You can, and ideally you will be retargeting to your database. So if you have your leads in your CRM, you can upload them all into your social media account and create a custom audience list. Now, some of this stuff might be going over your head and you might not know what I'm talking about. Keep it in the back of your mind and do some research afterwards. If you don't know how to build a custom audience list in Facebook, you can learn how to do this. I'm not technical and I learned how to do all of this stuff. Um, and the easiest thing is just free posts back to your website on your Facebook page, on your Instagram page. You can be linking back to the property on your website, if you have one, if you have an IDX website, use that. If you don't have your own website, listings to leads is a great resource. And I'm pretty sure they're actually doing an, a breakout session. If you don't know about listings to leads, I suggest you go. If you're just starting, it's a very inexpensive and a great way to run Facebook ads and to market your listings as well as other properties that you may be doing an open house for. On Thursday, we send an email invite to our database. Every Thursday, one goes out. It has all of our open houses for the week, all of our new listings, and any other listing that's still just kind of hanging around we haven't sold yet, and any other announcements that we have. But that goes out every Thursday. And we circle prospect. Circle prospect meaning calling the neighborhood around the open house. Uh, we can start that Thursday, Friday, just depending how much, you know, how your, your schedule is looking. So you can do that on Thursday, you can do that on Friday, you can do that in the morning before your open house. And you're calling the neighbors and basically you're calling them to invite them to your open house. Hey, Mr. Jones, this is Virginia Corbin. I'm just calling you out. As you notice, uh, your neighbor's home at 123 Spruce Street just came on the market on Thursday. Uh, and I got to tell you, we're already having a lot of activity, a lot of interest in this house. So we're going to do an open house this weekend. I wanted to let you know in advance because you're probably going to see a lot of cars and a lot of traffic. I just didn't want you to be concerned. Um, and listen, if you'd like to come by and see what your neighbors have done to get their home ready for market, you're more than welcome to, to come by. I'd love to, I'd love to personally invite you. Uh, and But I'm probably going to have a situation with this house. Like, likely, by the time the weekend's over, I'm going to have five to ten offers on this house. And I only got one house to sell them. <coughs> People love your neighborhood. And if I have five or 10 pre-approved buyers that want to live in your neighborhood and I only have one house to sell them, that puts me in a difficult position of having to tell nine people no. So let me ask, is there anyone you know that's thinking about selling their home? Because I could probably sell it without even putting it on the market. And they'll probably say no. And then you ask again, are you sure? <laughs> You don't know of anyone that might be thinking about selling their home and they'll think about it and they might on that sometimes that second question can trigger it and if it can't just like great no worries what's your cell phone number i'm going to send you my information if you hear of anyone that is thinking about selling their home could you please let me know as soon as possible and listen are you interested personally in learning about market information for your neighborhood they'll probably might say yes you know great What's your email address? I'll send that information to you. What have I just done? I've gotten their cell phone number because maybe I'm calling them on a landline because a lot of times, I didn't go say this, but we would get their information a lot of times from a source, source like Coal Realty Resources or Red X where you can get numbers for circle prospecting. A lot of times you're getting landlines, right? So if you don't have a cell number, you just say, hey, what's your cell number? I'll, I want to send you this information. Bam, now you have that. What's your email address? Not never. Can I have your cell phone number? Never. 
can I have your email address? No, because what can they say? No, they're more likely to get the information if you ask them in a way that just automatically assumes that they're willing to give it to you. They'll just kind of, it'll just fall out of their mouth before they, before they know it. Uh, so another type of circle prospecting is door knocking. It's basically the same script. It's the same conversation, except you're knocking on the door in person with a big smile on your face. Now, it has to be said, if you are a woman, door knocking is a lot easier, okay? If you are a man, it can sometimes be a little more challenging. People might be less likely to open the door for you. Sorry, needs to be said. I've heard it over and over again. I heard about this one guy who used to bring, he had a two-year-old and he used to bring his baby. I don't think, I think it was younger than two because two-year-old could be problematic. He used to bring his baby with him when he was door knocking and people always open the door for him. Kids are expensive for 18 years. So when you can turn them into a lead source, do it. So make some money off that baby while you still can. <laughs> uh, reverse prospect into agents. So you can go through your MLS and you can find out, please don't blast every agent in your MLS, but email the agents that are selling in that neighborhood, in that price point. Email the agents whose brokerages are located in that town, invite them to send their clients and we will protect their agency. Signs, 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 signs. That is one of the things I'm very much known for is my signage. So every open house, we vomit signs all over the place. We usually put them up on Thursday or Friday. I have hundreds, thousands, of, maybe hundreds, hundreds of open house signs. We have three different versions, Saturday two to four, Sunday two to four, Saturday, Sunday two to four. And then we have some blank ones, right? So our open house signs can go up Thursday for an open house that we're doing Sunday. And then they sit out there for four days, right? So what do I just have? I just have 25 mini billboards with my name and my photo on it for four days. Every week in multiple open house locations, 52 weeks a year. That's on top of the uh, yard sign and the two directional signs for each property. So at any given time, I could literally have hundreds of signs with my name and my photo out there that people are driving by. Live video promo. Okay, so now we're at Friday, we're at Friday. So you got to do a couple things. One, if you're, you're going out and you're putting your signs all over the place, 20 to 25, Michael would say 50, but you know, 20, 25, 50, whatever match signs that you're putting out Thursday or Friday. Then you're going to go to the house because you've got stuff to do at the house. Number one, you got to do a dress rehearsal, especially if it's not your listing. You got to go into that house. You got to make sure that you know, is it oil or is it gas or is it electric? Where is the oil tank? How old is the furnace? How old is the roof? Hopefully, if you don't know that information, the listing agent has provided you with some sort of information sheet of the stuff that doesn't make it into the MLS. And if you don't know the answer, you need to find out, right? Because you want to be able to, a buyer was going to ask you, and they're going to ask you about the heating system. You're going to be like, oh yeah, it's above ground oil. Furnace was installed 10 years ago. The oil tanks were replaced uh, three years ago. Right? You're going to need to be able to provide that information to the buyers that are walking inside. You also need to think like, how am I going to walk people through this house, right? It's your dress rehearsal. What I'm going to show them first, what am I going to talk about? What are the features that I'm going to point out? And then while you're there, you're going to do your live video promo. You're in your first live video, right? How many of you like to do video on social media? Okay. Doing video on social media is a fantastic way to get your name and get your brand out there. And if you're conscientious about doing video because you don't like the way you look, get over it. Everyone knows what you look like. They're just seeing you on camera. Trust me. So the easiest way to kind of get over this fear is just to hit that live button and go, right? Because there are no retakes and you're just going to do it, right? Now, something that most people do when they start live videos, including me, it's, it's, it's just this habit is to start your live video. Hey, everybody, it's Virginia and I'm here today. Blah, 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 blah. Ah. No, you should be starting your video with some sort of hook, right? What's the hook line? Are you looking for a riverfront property with an in-ground pool and a finished basement? Well, then I have a home for you. Hey everyone, it's Virginia and I'm here, I'm here today giving you a little preview of this amazing home that we're gonna have open this weekend. 
right? Give them a little hook, then introduce yourself on the live video. And you can do this on Facebook, you know, Instagram. Um, if you're interested in learning more about video on social media, watch Jason Shepardak's class. He taught, it was the first class. Make sure you catch the replay. That was a great class on social media video. Let's see. Uh, I think I got one more, don't I? One more bullet on this page. All right. And then you got to cast your roles. Who's going to be sitting at open house with you? Because I hope nobody's sitting in open house by themselves. For your security, for the seller's security, and also your ability to manage traffic and actually convert those leads. There should always be at least two people at an open house. And if you think it's going to be a bananas one, have three. We, use, we usually have a lead agent an assisting agent, which in our team is usually like a brand new agent that's coming, it's kind of learning the ropes. And then we also ask our lenders to participate as well, because you got to manage traffic, you got to have somebody checking in so that someone else can be shown the house and building rapport and getting getting them through. So you got to cast your roles. I hope you guys are starting to appreciate the theater references here. So call time. Call time is usually 30 minutes before we'll get to that, but you got to pack your props, right? And how do you not forget what you need to bring to an open house? You have a checklist. You have a checklist for every single component of your open house, right? First thing we have on our open house checklist is what to bring. Flyers, business cards, water bottles, pens, hand sanitizer, uh, the, the seller's Wi-Fi password. Anything that you need to bring, have it there. What I do and I recommend for our team is just to have a bag packed with everything you need for an open house, your clipboards, your door signs, whatever. So that when you have an open house, all you gotta do is print out the property specific flyer and just make sure everything else is stocked and you're good to go. So you're not scrambling before your open houses. Arrive in costume, this is a job interview. Business attire is the only acceptable uh, attire for an open house. You're gonna be meeting people that you will likely be helping to buy or sell a home. So you never have a second chance to make that first impression. I'll arrive 30 minutes early because there is so much to do. There's so much to get ready. And the last thing that you want to have happen is you're like running around frantic trying to get things set up and you've got a line out the door at five minutes before your open house is scheduled to start. Set up your marquee. Bring more signs. Bring balloons. I usually recommend 10 to 12 balloons. You're putting two on five to six signs. Whatever signs you put out on Thursday, what are the ones that are near the high traffic areas? You want to put balloons on that, right? Because then, you know, by this time, people have driven by those signs five, six, seven times. Now all of a sudden they're driving by and there are balloons. And it's different. There's movement. Oh, okay. Now, now is actually when it's happening. And your door signage. In New York State, we have to have, for example, a sign about the fair housing laws. So everyone has a laminated copy of that. That goes up on the door. We also have a, you know, a welcome sign on the door. Whatever you need for your personal open house, you put that up on the door. Now you got to check the house. Lights on, toilets closed and flush. I know, gross, but you all know what we walk into sometimes. Blinds open, clutter away, including your clutter. Don't leave all of your bags and coats and everything streaming all over the dining room table. Leave that in the car or secure it somewhere in the house. Ladies, don't leave your pocketbook sitting out on the kitchen counter or the kitchen table, okay? Either lock it in your car or I love sticking stuff like under a kitchen cabinet, right? Where people are probably not going to be looking. Your box office setup. When you go to see, when you go to the theater, you don't get in without a ticket. You don't get in without walking past the box office. So set up your box office, your sign-in table at the entrance of the door. Now, sometimes that means you're gonna have to take a piece of the seller's furniture and move it to the front door. Whenever possible, it's a little hard to do with buy levels, but wherever possible, try to have that set up right by the front door or as close to the front door as humanly possible because you then are able to control the traffic flow. We've even done it outside, if the weather is nice, on the front porch. Set up your concessions. Well, COVID, we had no food at open houses, right? We, we weren't even, we didn't dare. Uh, we're starting to get back to food at open houses. So set up those concessions in the kitchen, right? And people do enjoy it. We've even done things like have an ice cream cart 
at an open house that we knew was going to be big. Or one time we did, we had two listings, three doors apart from each other. We did open houses at both the same day. So we had an ice cream cart, invited the whole neighborhood. Now you're warm up. You got to get your energy up. You got to practice greeting people, right? You have to be ready mentally and physically and emotionally for the two hour performance that you are about to undertake. So get yourself warmed up, get yourself in the right head, head space, that fight that you had with your spouse two hours before, get that out of your head. You are here, it's game on. And then you're gonna do one more live video, right? I am here at 127 Spruce Street. We've already got a line of traffic. Look at all these cars waiting to get in our open house. So if you wanna come in and see this house, you better get here soon. I'm gonna be here till four, don't worry. If you can't make it, just reach out to me and we'll schedule a private showing for tomorrow, okay? Another chance, this is an op, this gives you constant opportunities to get yourself out there to the public and get your name out there and get your energy out there. All right, and it's curtain up. So now we're at showtime. Your scripts and your blocking, know what to say, how to say it, how to guide people through the house. Now, a lot of this, you, hopefully you practice a little bit when you were there on Friday, like going through the house. The first 10 seconds of their arrival are critical. Be over the top excited that they are there. Like a friend coming to your housewarming party. So I'm gonna walk up to you. You're gonna walk through my door and you're like, hi there. Thank you so much for coming to our open house. What's your name? Lauren, I'm Virginia. Welcome. So Lauren, hey, tell me, are you from the area or are you from down in the city? Uh, down in the city. Awesome. And I'm going to go right into rapport. I'm shaking her hand. I'm looking her in the eye. I'm not breaking contact, at least so I can identify what the color of her eyes are. Every time you meet someone, that is how you should be meeting them. Make eye contact, shake their hand. You'd be surprised. Even on the team, I see agents that they're, they're, they're talking to them and they're looking at the ground or looking at their paper. I'm like, no, no, no. This is your chance, your immediate chance to, to, bond, to bond with that person. Be so excited that they are there. I'm so excited you're here and I bet you're gonna buy this house. I mean, I have so much fun. I actually don't do open houses very much anymore now that I run a team. I had so much fun with them and I love going back and doing them just to shadow for the team because I really have the most fun with people at open houses. Shake their hand, make eye contact with them. Ah, just need you to get you signed in and then I can send you a link with all the property photos and information after the open house, okay? And they're gonna say, okay, you've just gotten verbal permission to email them and to send them a text message. That's your reasoning for taking their information. So now you gotta sign them in. Every, no one gets in without signing in. No one gets in the house without signing in. What we do, we do paper and electronic. We do paper first, and then we enter them into electronic. Uh, reason being is if we're just putting them into an electronic system, as soon as they enter, it's like the record of them kind of disappears from your immediate site. So I like having that paper check sign in so I can see, okay, who's here, who's next, who's this agent walking around with, and if I need to, I can make some notes. What's very important is that sign in happens either outside the house or right at the front door, and that whoever is going to be entering the information into the system later is the person writing it down. Never let the buyer fill out the sign in sheet. A couple of reasons. They're more likely to lie about their information if they're privately writing it in themselves instead of verbally telling you what their email address and their phone number is. And most importantly, you're not gonna be able to read their handwriting. 90% of the people, you're not gonna be able to read their handwriting. And if you misread one digit on the cell phone number or one letter on the email address, they're lost forever to you. So make sure that you're writing it down. On the last column of our sign-in sheet, we have a question that says, who are you working with? Never are you working with an agent. Because they're just going to say yes, just to get you off their back. Who are you working with? <clears throat> I'm going to ask just for questions to help the end. So who are you working with, right? They're either going to tell you they're not working with anybody or they're going to tell you the name. You want, if they are working with an agent, you want to know that name 
because you, it, especially if you are the actual listing agent or you're on the team at listing team, you might want to follow up with that agent after the open house to find out if your client wants to put in an offer. So next thing, from this question, you're going to figure out what the representation is. Different people have different approaches to dealing with buyers of different levels of representation. This is our approach. There's five different types of representation. No representation. Who are you working with? I'm not working with anybody. Fantastic. Well, then we're going to help you buy a house. You're right there, right? Who are you working with? Um, uh, his name's John. Honey, do you remember John's last name? They're not working with you, right? So in that, I would say, well, sounds like you're you know, in the process of checking out some different agents. We will be happy to help you along. Uncertain representation. They have a name, but you're not really sure like what the relationship is and you're having trouble figuring that in. Hey, would it help to have a second set of eyes looking for properties for you? They're going to say, nope, it would, no problem at all. It would certainly help. Signed representation. You're probably going to want to back off if they definitely say, yep, we're working with Jane Doe and we're signed with her, right? Probably want to back off. You are still going to send them a link to the property so they'll have a way to contact you. And if they arrive with representation, obviously arrive with representation, you're just gonna let that agent kind of have their showing. You're mostly gonna to wanna to focus on those three types of buyers, right? So if you have a very busy open house, you're gonna to have to make choices about which buyers you're gonna actually walk through the house and which ones you're just gonna hand a flyer and say, hey, go ahead, you know, feel free to walk through, I'm around. We're around if you have any questions, right? You're, if it's a busy open house, you're not going to have time to focus on everyone. So you want to focus on the people that you're more, most likely to convert. And you're going to spend time on Ford. What's Ford? You're going to ask them about their family, their occupation, their recreation, their dreams, why they're here and what they're looking for. So family, because, you know, hey, so how many people are going to be living in this house? Oh, there's, you know, four kids. So you, already you're starting to get an idea. Okay, so they probably need like at least a four bedroom house and school districts might be important to them. And, you know, oh, what do you like to do? Oh, we love to rock climb. Okay, well, then maybe you're going to live in our area. It'd be a place like New Paltz or, or Gardner. You're going to get kind of a sense of who they are and what type of properties they might be interested in. You're going to take notes, right? Take notes because you're not going to remember if you've walked around with 20 people. So we, I always, everyone team, we have these little teeny notebooks that we walk around the open house and just take notes, right? You're not going to offend them by taking notes. You're actually going to make them feel like you care enough about them to remember what they're talking about. And they're going to be happy to have you do that. At minimum, after you've walked them through the house, at minimum, you should have enough information about those people to set, up, set them up on a custom um, what a property search, ELR, whatever your whatever the terminology your system uses. Uh, but ideally, you should be setting an appointment. You should be setting at least one appointment at every open house that you do, right? Could be a buyer consultation. Could be to see a house tomorrow or later that day. Could be a listing appointment. But that should be your benchmark of whether or not your open house was successful. I don't care if three people came or 20 people came. If three people came and you set one appointment, that's more successful than if 20 people came and you set no appointments, right? Nosy neighbors, we love nosy neighbors. Nosy neighbors are future sellers, right? So with them, you wanna be asking them questions about their house. How does their house compare to this house, right? And are they interested in receiving market information, making sure you have all their contact details. Before they leave, you gotta give them some stuff, right? So we like to give them two things. Number one, we like to leave a lasting impression. So on our team, we all do digital business cards, right? So I have on my phone, a QR co code comes up. I was like, hey, take out your phone, take, just scan this, click. My whole contact card comes up with my photo, my, all my email, all my phone numbers, my Facebook page, my Google reviews, my Instagram, my LinkedIn, every single account I have that, I, that accesses me is on that contact card and they save it right to their phone, right? Because if all you do is hand them a business card, guess what, the business card, it's gonna be on the floor of the car, it's gonna be in the yard, it's gonna be somewhere. But you also wanna give them a souvenir. Like people like, 
Like I find the digital business cards are great, but some people still feel lacking because you haven't actually given them something, right? So number one, you're gonna give them a, a property flyer, which will have your contact information. Your lender will be more than happy to make beautiful flyers for you. So make sure you're asking them and, and so that you have to give to them. Or you can make flyers your, yourself, lots of resources for that. The other thing that we started doing, partner with one of your vendors to actually give them something of value, but that they have to hang on to your physical business card to get. So for example, our mover uh, allows us, we have a sticker, you, so we do the digital business card, but we also give them a regular business card. On the back of it, there's a sticker that says, um, uh, so and so that's such and such mover will give you free moving supplies. All you need to do is call and mention my name, right? And you give that to them and you tell them, as our gift to you for coming to open house, our mover is willing to give you free moving supplies whenever you're ready to move, whether you use our team or not. Just make sure you hang on to this business card and when you're ready to move, give them a call. So if you don't have a mover that do it, maybe your home inspector will give a 10% discount, right? Do you think your home inspector would do that if it meant they're gonna get an extra two or three home inspections every week? Heck yeah. Maybe your lender has something that they can offer, right? So talk to your, your, uh, your, your partners about that. Okay, I'm good. All right, current call. Now we're at the end. And the open house, so important. Restore and secure the house. If you, number one, if you're a listing agent and you don't restore and secure the house, you're gonna get an earful from your seller. Right. If you leave the back door open or the toilet not flush, you're going to hear it. And no one likes to have that conversation. If you're doing an open house for another listing agent, you're going to get an earful from that listing agent who just got an earful from that seller. Right. And you're not going to be asked again to do another open house for that agent. Finish any notes, any notes that you took on that person. I like to do it before I leave the house because by the time I get home, I'm I'm like exhausted, exhausted. So I like to do it before I leave the house. Do your end of event Facebook live video. So right now, now you've had three instances to go live on social media from one open house. Talk about how many people came, what a success it was, what people thought of the house. Hey, but if you didn't get a chance to come to the open house, no worries. Give me a call, send me a private message. I'll make sure we get in to see it tomorrow going to give the seller or listing agent feedback. That's just courtesy. And that's going to make sure that your seller is happy or that your listing agent wants you to do more open houses for them. Call agents who sign clients, attend it without them. But now, now here's where the real work begins, the follow-up. It begins that night. So you have the people, the people that you're going to call, people without representation, you're going to call them that night. You're going to text them. You're going to ask them for feedback. Um, if, you have, if you have a type, we have Sierra, so we have an automated open house plan. So someone comes, we put them into our system, they're autom automatically going to be getting text messages and emails, asking for feedback, um, you know, asking them if they want to see any other properties. So whatever system you're using, think about what is a follow-up plan, an automated follow-up plan that you can design. Setting up property searches we talked about, call them, call them that night. Call them that night. See if you have any questions. Hey, thanks for coming by. I just want to touch base with you while the property is fresh in your mind to see if you have any questions. And if it's a Saturday, you definitely call them at night because, hey, are there any other properties that you're thinking of seeing or any other open houses that you're going to go to tomorrow? Oh, you're going to go to that open house at 123 Main Street? Oh my gosh, I have been dying to see that house. What time are you going? I'll meet you there. Then you walk in with them into that open house. Now you're their agent at that open house. Because if they because trust me, they're going to multiple open houses that weekend, right? They're meeting multiple agents that weekend, right? Whoever follows up best wins. It's right there. By the end of the weekend, they will have an agent. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be you or is it going to be somebody else? What you do immediately during the open house, if you can set that appointment, you've won. If you don't set it, at the open house, call them at night and try to get the appointment done. Yep. Yep. And then 
for the grand finale on Monday, you're going to recircle prospect the neighborhood. Talk about how many people they came. Talk about how many offers came in. Are you sure? You don't know anybody that's thinking of selling the house? I mean, I did get eight offers above asking on this property. I'd really like to help these people find a home. You sure you don't know anyone? You're going to do this and you're going to do this over and over every weekend. And that is how you build your business on open houses. This is our door sign here. We talked about door signs. I found this one online. Really love that one. But do you see how open houses, they are a process. They're not just something you wake up and you show up at a house and you do on a Saturday. They are a process. They are a lead generation funnel for you. Thank you so much. Any questions? Thank you for holding your questions. Yes, I saw you up first. Same thing. Yep. Table might be hard. Bring toilet paper. <laughs> you know, you might, you know, maybe, I don't know. Maybe you have a little fold up table that you bring or you just wing it. Maybe in a vacant open house, you have to do on the kitchen counter. But if you have one of those fold tables, you could bring that too. That would be the one thing. This one, you want me to go back? I found this online. Like I, I, I didn't make this. I'm not that creative. Yes. So when you talk about Anywhere, anywhere I can, at the house, at every street corner, at the main, like, you know, like if you have like, yeah, the directionals with arrows, with arrows. So we have, yeah, so we have arrows that point this way and we have arrows that point this way. So we can put them on the road saying like, keep going straight. And then at the turn, we go turn and, you know, we'll put them at multiple turns and turns and any way you can go, who cares? Um, yeah, I don't think of that as real. I mean, what kind of car do you have, Jody? Jody's, they, yeah, so we should do it that. I mean, I, I had a Subaru, Subaru Forester, but I did myself, you know, yeah. I used to do them. So, yeah. So, what do you mean they're gone? Are, I, I don't usually have that problem. Are you using mylar balloons or latex balloons? I, I honestly, I don't really have that problem with mylar balloons. Uh, <laughs> oh, find a different balloon balloon store then. Yeah. You can use flags. You can use flags. I want to get. I want to get. I want to get one of those like those things that like have the air. They blow up and there's like. Aah. I want to get one of those. I thought those are really cool. <laughs> In the back there, yes. Oh, sorry, say, yeah, I just want to get you signed in so we can send you a link to the property with all the photos and information that we can share with you after the event, okay? If you are getting pushback to getting people signed in, it's your fault. It's because you're afraid to ask that question and that is coming through, right? If you're just making it seem like this is a normal thing and everyone does it, you're not going to get pushback. And if you do get from the random person, just be like, I'm so sorry. Seller just requires that everybody signs in before it lets them into their home. So, and if they say no, I've, you know, once or twice I have had people I had turn away, right? It was really easy with COVID. Oh, sorry, we need to keep track of everyone's in here. You know, COVID, <laughs> COVID made it easy. But yeah, if you're getting pushback, it's you, most cases. Five minutes, yes. Ah, okay, so you call them, call them the for sale by owner. I would just say, hey, I just saw your home came on the market. Congratulations. Are you planning on doing an open house? 
And whatever they say, just be like, hey, we've got a fantastic open house process. We normally get anywhere from 12 to 20 groups to the home in a couple of hours. Would you be open-minded to letting us just do an open house at your house? I mean, we're not going to charge anything. And, get, and if a buyer comes for your house, we're just going to give them to you. We're not going to take the buyer for your house. And, and they're going to be like, well, what's in it for you? They're going to wonder, well, why would you do that if, I, if you're not charging me money and you're going to give me the buyer? Well, because those 18 other people, I just want their contact. 18 people that don't want your house, I just want their contact information. And I'll just help them find something else. So that's going to sound like a fair deal to you, Mr. Seller. I'm going to give, I'm going to do an open house for you. I'm going to market the bejesus out of it. I'm going to get 15, 20 groups there. You're going to get that buyer for free. All I'm asking for is the contact information for the others. Right. And some people don't even give them the buyer for free. Some people say, hey, if a buyer walks in, you know, I'll just represent them. If, if they're the type of um, uh, for sale by owner that's public about we will pay a buyer commission, I'd probably go that route. But if a for sale by owner doesn't want to pay any commission, then you might not be able to do that. Okay. A uh, couple minutes. Any other final questions? What? What? Oh, Ford, family occupation, recreation, and dreams. I think I have one more question in the back there. Oh, Blink, B-L-I-N-Q. It's free, it's awesome. I should let you, if you want, you, Jody has my phone. If you want, scan my digital business card. I have a picture with me and Barbara Corcoran, because I, I have an endorsement with Barbara Corcoran. And I have all my information. They can click and see all my 369 Google five-star reviews. They can go to my Facebook page. And it makes you look like a rock star when you have that. It's a great thing. I don't know if you can come, somewhat see, but it's awesome. You need a better picture. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I somewhat that quick. I was at the Remax R4 convention last year, and one of the tech guys I was standing behind him in Starbucks in the hotel, and they taught me about that. I always say that was a that was the most amazing thing I learned at R4 two years ago. <laughs> was in line at the Starbucks. <laughs> um, anything else? One more. Where do you advertise your uh, open houses before it's up? Just social media, like that. That entire week. Oh, well, we have something called coming soon. So right. it's actually on the MLS. We're just not showing it, right. right? And then we start advertising that Monday before. If you don't have that, I mean, you have to follow your guidelines. I don't, I don't know if you can advertise before. It's at least some way in the open house. Yes. You, that you have to follow, you have to follow your, your state guidelines for that one. I mean, but if you can do it on social media, you know, you, I would do it on social media, even if you don't say the address, right? I mean, it's going to go because if it's a, if it's a FISBO, right, it's probably showing up on Zillow anyway. So then the seller is just putting that in, right? So at least that information is out there and you can certainly put signs out. Um, it depends if you're in a, if you're on any type of a commission agreement. And again, this is very state by state rule. But if you have an agreement that they're going to pay a commission uh, to a, if you bring a buyer, then you're probably going to want to have that paperwork signed. Uh, that's really a question for your broker. Where are we allowed to advertise coming soon? Is it like coming tomorrow, 24 hours? Is that enough time to list it and advertise it Thursday? So what we do, our open house process is this. We put it on the open house. We put it on the MLS on Thursday as a coming soon listing. We market it for one week. We allow showings to begin on Thursdays. And then we do the following Thursday, a week later. And then we do our open house this Saturday and Sunday. So we allow showings before the open house. That's not, we don't keep showings closed till that. So you could put the property on the market. I mean, Thursday, statistically, Thursday is the best day to list a property on, on. So we always hit Thursdays, right? And make sure when you're on a listing appointment, you explain to your seller 
that you have a listening process. I mean, this is a separate topic, but I always say, here's our process. We send our photographers out there on a Monday or Tuesday. We put it on the, on the MLS as a coming soon listing that Thursday. We market it for a week. We start showing the following Thursday. We open house that Saturday, Sunday. The reason why we hit Thursdays is statistically, it's the best day to put the home on the market. And the National Association of Realtors say that homes sell for 3% more that are listed on Thursdays. Right then, and this is totally, this is totally off topic, but that seller's like, man, that girl's got a plan. That girl knows what she's doing. She's not winging it, right? So if you have a plan, use it. Okay, I know we're over, right? All right, thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it.